the community sent Mr. Lou off with the second line from the mortuary to Sportsman's Corner, where the family and friends of Louis Elwa Sr. laid Mr. Lou in state on top of the bar that he built and maintained for 30 years laid to rest in a tradition that can only be a New Orleans original rest in peace Mr. Lou the fruits you leave behind will continue the immortality you planted here on earth. I want to take this opportunity to thank those of you that attended our story networks lecture series this past Friday we had several people from previous lectures we have held and I want to thank those of you that were returning for your time and your attendance we also had a nice turnout of first-time members of the audience. To you as well, we extend our appreciation for your presence. To those of you who have not been able to attend as of yet, I want you to know we are going to continue the lecture series on the last Friday of each month throughout the summer months. We are planning to increase the frequency be uh, beginning in the fall of the year and for this month, as for June, our story is attempting to arrange a guest from outside of New Orleans. As soon as we are able to confirm it, I will announce the guest here on our weekly show. I will tell you this, though. We are trying to get our first female guest speaker for the lecture series. However, Brother Mikkel dazzled last Friday's attendees with his research. Even though we requested any Masons that were in attendance to identify themselves, to no avail, I will say, which we knew in advance that the Masons would choose to remain anonymous. We had several Masons in the house that we knew were there. I'm sure a full report of the lecture followed last evening's event. As a keystone, I want to announce that the topic of secret societies will be a series in and of itself, and we will reserve several Wednesdays to telecast additional lectures right here on our story. 
So look forward to these sessions in the coming weeks. We had several people that um, have contacted us and have been asking us about what it is that we do. We talk about the things that we have and one of the, the important parts of our programming <clears throat> are the announcements that we are able to supply and get out to our listeners. And Brother Robert called me from Safe Streets about 5, 5.30 this evening to tell me that there was something brewing for tomorrow and it was urgent that I get this out, so let me give it to you. Are you sick and tired of the NOPD harassing you and your family? Do you want a safer New Orleans? Tomorrow, the 5th of June, the city council is having a meeting where they plan to vote on an ordinance that will be able to help us stop the abuse, misconduct, and corruption in the NOPD. This is a vote for an independent police monitor. We're asking you to come out tomorrow between the hours of 10 and 12. We are asking if you can't make it, call a friend, call a family member. And also, whether you can make it or not, call your city councilman and tell them that you want the legislation to pass for an independent monitor. If you need more information on this, call City Streets Strong Community and you can reach them at area code 504-522-3949. Once again, that's 522-3949. That's Safe Streets Strong Community. Tonight, we have representatives from C3 to discuss the Iberville housing development situation and the work C3 is doing in the New Orleans area. As a means of introducing the discussion for tonight, allow me to call your attention to the New Orleans skyline, a skyline that reveals the new New Orleans, a New Orleans that is void of black people. A New Orleans that will serve white supremacy at the cost of black lives and black tradition. As we can see, the relationship of Iberville housing development to the new New Orleans white business district, we find their need for the displacement of black folk because of the proximity and location of Iberville Housing Development. As you can see, Iberville Housing Development is spread out between the CBD and St. Louis Cemetery Number 1, a local tourist attraction. As most of the public housing developments have disappeared from the so-called skyline of New Orleans, we find Iberville nestled on the outskirts of the Central Business District and the historic French Quarters. Once, the popular Iberville housing development served as a slave quarters for the service job employees, people, black folk, that worked in the French Quarter and the CBD. Obviously, the new New Orleans has no need for housing of blacks and poor people close to the CBD. Tonight, we have with us Mikkel, who is sitting in as our 
co guest co host tonight. And from C uh, C three Hands Off Iberville, we have Jay Arena and Cody Marshall, who is a resident of Iberville. Good evening, gentlemen, and thank you for taking time out for being here with us this evening. Good evening. Good evening. Jay, I will start with you. Tell us what is C three Hands Off Iberville about, what they're doing. And what are the press, pressing issues facing us this evening? Well, we uh, <clears throat> C3 Hands Off Fiberville was formed before Katrina uh, to oppose the uh, plans to uh, demolish, redevelop uh, the Iberville along the lines of what was done, the crime that was done at the St. Thomas development. Uh, but because we rallied pre-Katrina, we were able to defeat this uh, privatization scheme uh, floated by uh, Hanno and backed up by the developers. Following Katrina, uh, because of our previous protests, because of residents uh, taking back their apartments, because of protest, they were not, they being the, uh, the local government, George Bush, were not able to demolish the Iberville. Uh, our group was uh, stood in solidarity with the other developments um, to oppose this demolition, and, uh, uh, and that we did get gain some victories. But while this was happening, behind the scenes, schemes were going on involving the downtown development district, Kurt Weigel, very important institution, hotel owner, Michael Valentino, who owns a property right next to the Iberville, architect Ray Manning, who was involved in destroying the uh, St. Thomas development, uh, along with uh, the unrepresentative tenant councils, the same type of tenant, resident tenant councils we've seen signing off on demolition across the city in spite of rank and file residents opposing it. This cabal, we'll call it, has been meeting and floating this plan uh, to downsize Iberville from almost 900 units to only 300 affordable. And they, of course, have a broad definition of, a, of affordable. And of those 300, only a handful would be public housing. Again, this is in the context when we've had uh, some 5,000 apartments demolished with no financing to rebuild any, when our homeless population has doubled since Katrina quadrupled per capita, when rents have skyrocketed. Um, and so if, even if you're in private rental housing, when you take out all that public housing, that's going to ra raise rent. So we want to really thank our story for giving us an opportunity to shed light on these schemes and their efforts to get uh, James Carter, the city councilman, uh, who's met with this uh, group, it's called us the so-called Iberville Rebirth Coalition. They have a particular uh, definition of rebirth, meaning driving out poor and black people from the uh, from the Iberville. That's their definition of rebirth. We reject that. We want to defend all the public housing apartments. We need public housing now more than ever. And we are vehemently opposed to this scheme floated, again, by Kurt Weigel, runs the downtown development district, an obscure but very important outfit, Ray Manning, Michael Valentino, and the tenant council leader, Kim Paul, at the Iberville. And uh, we, we, are, we reject their proposal, and we demand that, that uh, James Carter and the Nagan administration not sign off on this. But it's particularly important for James Carter because this is in his district, District C, and as, as we know, part of the uh, tradition uh, in this city is that if the city council in that, in that district signs off on a, on a, a redevelopment, the rest of the, rest of the council uh, will go along. And he's met with this group and has really not had any problems with it. And we call on him to reject uh, this plan. The Jewish community, community is going to be upset with you calling this a cabal. Is there any significance or symbolism why you called it a cabal? Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'll define my terms. It's, it's a group that's meeting behind closed doors. These have not been open to the public, have not been advertised. 